Retail investors sounding the alarm big time all weekend long, uh, going after the financial industry authority, FINRA, uh, for halting its shares and a preferred stock of meta, of meta metals. And so we want to get into what happened, why is this such a big deal? Uh, here to help us out is former Torchlight Energy CEO John Berta, whose company uh, was was taken over, if you will, or at least the, the, the symbol was uh, by Meta uh, Metals. And John, you and I spoke earlier on the phone. It's 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 a tough one to hash out in just three and a half, four minutes. But let's get to the crux of the issue here. Explain what happened sure. for the audience who may not know what's going on. Sure. Well, Charles, thank you for having me on, and I appreciate you giving us this time. Um, back in June of 2021, we uh, concluded a merger with Meta Materials. And as part of the business arrangement for that uh, transaction, we were to issue a Series A preferred share um, that was to be non-tradable uh, for all of our Torchlight shareholders of record on the uh, dividend date, on the record date. And we closed that transaction and issued 165 million shares uh, to those shareholders of record. And we went about closing the transaction and uh, Meta changed the their ticker, ticker symbol to MMAT, and now they're on the NASDAQ and going about their business. Um, fast forward about four months, and uh, after you know, kind of doing some investigation on whether or not the entire short positions were closed out, we found out that that truly didn't happen. And then two market makers got together, went to FINRA, went to OTC markets, and started trading the Series A preferred as MMTLP, or Meta Materials Preferred. Uh, and they did so with fraudulent information on OTC markets. And when I found out about it personally, because they were using my information, I called OTC markets and was advised at that time that FINRA approved it, two market makers uh, got together and listed it without company input and without the issuer knowing. Mm -hmm. And they went ahead and allowed it and um, decided at that, time, at that point they were gonna do nothing. And, and so and that's- this, John, John that's this, was, this was not, the, the company had nothing to do with this. Two market makers, said, hey, we want this to trade. FINRA said, okay, we'll trade. Let's talk about the synthetic shares of the shorting that goes on and how this happens over and over again. Shorting that, that uh, you know, for many people, it, it's never, it, you know, there's, it, it's, it's sort of a way that these firms have been able to abuse smaller companies, smaller listed companies. Yes, 100%. Thanks for bringing that up. So smaller companies like Torchlight and, and other companies that are out there in the small cap space, that need to consistently raise capital to further their business plans are the targets of basically uh, hedge funds and shorters that uh, short ahead of a potential offering or short uh, just to create pressure in the market so that uh, when a company has to go to the market to raise money, they're getting their stock at a cheaper price. And the only way for a synthetic or a naked short to cover is if the company actually issues real shares because otherwise, they're just sitting in a naked short that they haven't borrowed and they have, have not uh, done everything the proper way. So that's very pervasive in small cap stocks right. and companies in particular that need to raise capital throughout their life their lifespan. I got less than 30 seconds. Uh, people oh. on Twitter are saying like other firms are now saying uh, they won't allow any trading in the stock. I mean, if, uh, I'm not sure what the goal was with uh, these two firms. I think Canaccord and, and another. What's going to happen from here, John? Uh, we really don't know what's going to happen from here. FINRA halted the stock on the last two trading days when the only trading that could have gone on was buy to cover. And quite frankly, if there was a real problem, uh, if there was no problem with the short uh, position, uh, according to OTC markets, there's only six and a half million shares short. Well, if that's a problem, they could have worked that out in two days. Yeah. Uh, but they decided not to do that. They halted the stock. And now, as you know, it's... Uh, up for us to continue the pressure on that. All right, we'll keep the pressure going and keep us informed. I wish we had more time. It is complicated, but I'm, I'm glad you came on to share this part of the story. Thanks, John. Thanks, Charles, for your time. So from this room.